so far. And usually when we do see that strong soul laner coming through in first pick on blue side, the misfortune does follow. And that's exactly where they're looking to lock in. Yeah, the Misfortune has had some ridiculous... Talia. Oh, wow. Talia is also going to be locked in here. So, Talia, another one of those picks in the jungle that has been mentioned multiple times as of late as being extremely strong. We got to see some of the, you know, the new melee picks, the Talon, the Zed in the jungle. But now we get Talia. Yeah, the Talia should be really interesting here. It's something that I think really suits Willer's play style because it can hover around whatever, cha cho whatever champion Chovy is playing in that mid lane as we see the Evelyn tease here. Might be very flexible here, what we're gonna see with the Aurelia and Renekton now coming through here for Peas. Well, my biggest question now becomes, do you wanna prioritize Liliona, who has actually currently a 100% win rate here in Worlds, try to get that strong bot lane pairing there, or do you go elsewhere, try to lock in Chovy's champ here early, Something like the Azir scales well into the late game. You've got the Talia, pairs really well with it around level six. You can set up for those ganks very, very deadly. They'll actually pivot towards the Amumu instead, since it's left open here. Yeah, the Amumu does get through, and we've all talked about just how strong this pick can be in the support role. So they will forego the 100% win rate Leona and hop onto the Amumu instead. And I do like that they are focusing into that bottom lane. You know, everybody loves to talk about Jovi, Jovi, Jovi. He's like the main guy on the roster. But never forget about Deft and Vista. I'm sure uh, nobody forgets about Deft. But this bottom lane is definitely incredibly strong. And playing around it is not a bad idea for Hamalite. Yeah, you can now start to isolate some of the other meta champions for Violet to play. The Ezreal is taken away. The Yone removal here is something that's very stylistically Chovy. You see it all the time from this player uh, in our region. He plays it a lot with AP junglers like Talia, specifically if you roll back to Spring earlier this year. It's a very strong pairing we have seen in the LCK. So that's why that band comes out to really leaps out at you. And now, you know, if you want to really remove some of those last options, the Ziggs is a great removal here against Violet. A lot of consistent damage you can have in that bottom side. Really slow down the pace of the game. You have split pushing power with that Irelia. So if you have a Ziggs to kind of shore that up, the late game becomes a little bit more frustrating to play here as Honda Life Esports. The last ban here could potentially be that Azir, but they actually really are focusing uh -oh. on the a the AD jungles here, or rather mid lanes here, because of that AP Talia, and they are now going to take away the Yasuo. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've seen this many times in the LCK where teams try to ban out Chovy. Generally, it doesn't work very hey, well because... There's the Azir. <laughs> you were talking about Azir, right? It, there are like seven other things that he had ready to go. It's very hard to ban him out, but as you mentioned, I think the biggest thing is that they want to ban out strong meta AD mid laners. So they do a good job of that, at least. He goes back onto Comfort, onto this Azir. Let's see what we are going to have for the bottom lane here of piece especially with all the bands against this they are going to go for the tristana actually let's see how aggressive they get yeah the tristana going to be able to serve a very similar role to ziggs in terms of trying to control that bottom side of the map especially with a braum pick here to shore it up you can be very oppressive in the lane you can be very, very frustrating to deal with and if you're not going to you know rotate heavily to objectives as much as Honda life esports is you can get a lot of plate damage done there on the bottom side I'm going to pivot away from the Braum, though, potentially here and lock in this Rakan, which I do think suits the composition very well, considering you have such a powerful front line already with this Renekton and Aurelia. The last pick we're looking for here now is going to be what Morgan is playing this game. And it's a bit of a puzzling one to, to lock down. A lot of the time in the past, you'd see him play something like weak side of the composition like this with an Orn, for example, one of his better champions, historically speaking. Could be really anything right now, though, in this meta. I'm not going to play guesses because it's going to be the Aatrox coming Ooh. in here on R5. This is going to give this composition so much mid-game power. I think a lot of people look at this comp, see the Azir, and think, okay, well, we're headed towards late game. It's going to be Chovy with one of those massive CS leads when we get to the later parts of this game. But really, what this comp screams to me is a lot of mid-game fighting, a lot of skirmishing, level 6 gank. You're going to see that in the mid lane there with Chovy. Uh, and you're going to see a lot of power around that early Rift Herald fight in those first few drakes. Yeah, which is pretty interesting because you see on the other side, I mean, you're looking straight down the barrel of, you know, Renek can withstand some of that mid-game pressure and actually trade some of those fights back into their favor to take a nice lead. Absolutely. Well, it looks like we are ready to jump onto the Rift for game number one of day two of the world's play-ins. It is going to be awesome to watch this go down. Peace yesterday only playing the one game, looking to pick up some more. 
today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Hama Life, I think that yesterday they got knocked down a peg by LNG. I'm sure, you know, a lot of people were kind of expecting that, even some of us over here in Korea. And Hama Life are a strong team individually, as a lot of us have said. But uh, we'll have to see just how far they can push that envelope or if they can come together a bit more as a team before we really see uh, some more success out of this lineup. And we have seen, you know, some exceptions to this rule, but uh, to talk about Willer for a moment here against Baba, who's, you know, arguably the star player here for Peace and one of the players everybody's been talking about. This is the matchup you you feel is the most winnable. I think if you're a Peace fan right now and you look at the lineup of Hanoi Esports, he's generally a jungle player that likes to hover around Chovy. He likes to empower Chovy, likes to make Chovy's very risky, aggressive playstyle work very well, where he's very much about farming, farming, and being all about me. I'm Chovy, I'm going to get the money, I'm going to get the items, and I'm going to to carry the game and Willer is often kind of his personal bodyguard so in this game I expect that to, to kind of that trend to continue here is we're gonna see an aggressive level one fight yeah he's got the double bandage so you know he's going in but Aladaric is able to get in front and block that second bandage nicely done as Vista uses his exhaust to really put on that extra pressure here at level one yeah, it's a really nice lead to get in this matchup at level one to get those health bars low and have that control. And Chovy's already having a great time in the early part of this matchup. That's just how it goes against the Aurelia. But yeah, the exhaust burned here is not that big of a deal for Vista because he's not going to necessarily need that one defensively anytime soon. And if he was lucky, he might have been able to grab one of the summoners on the side of the P-Spot duo as well. But yeah, looking at how this game is going to shape up, I imagine that with the control of the lanes that Hanalife Life Esports should have in mid and bottom for the foreseeable future, we will see that early Drake Pryo coming through. And that's where I expect this game to start to really kind of take off. And if Peace don't contest those early objectives, Hanalife Life Esports are going to, oh, well, I, we're getting aggressive before I can even finish it. Yeah, getting in there with the Amumu, not a bad idea. Aladaric just trying to block off for his AD carry. It does a good job of that, but keep in mind, look at the gigantic wave that they're missing right now. Just the bottom lane of Peace just doesn't get to get in there. Chovy's looking for a solo kill here, and he's gonna get it with that first soldier that comes down. And wow, just happening already here at 3 minutes 20. I mean, and we know it's at, Chovy, but he can do some insane stuff. Look at the CS difference here in the bottom lane. Deft right now leading Violet 20 CS. They've been zoned out of experience even, finding themselves a level behind here. And look at how much CS is just wasted by this turret here. Not having a great time in this early game, really respecting a lot of the, the pressure that's coming here, through here for Honda Life Esports, but that comes obviously at a huge cost in terms of the gap here in the gold. And Chovy, very happy to pick up that first blood. He's going to have complete control of this lane. It's not going to get easier for Tally here anytime soon. He's going to need someone to come and help out. And with the control of the bottom side, so Honda Life Esports favored, there's no way that Aladoric can come up here. And Bobbit right now is not at a place where he can actually make an impact. Yeah, it's very true. We saw, you know, early on in that mid lane, Tally was just getting knocked down super, super low. Didn't think we'd see a solo kill this early on, but maybe just sticking around a little bit too much, a bit too greedy for the wave. You see he's keeping up in CS, but, you know, as you mentioned, you're never really going to have a good time against the Azir in the super early game as the Aurelia, so probably should have just let a couple of those go. And this lead is probably just going to get bigger. As you can see, he goes in for the kill. Yeah, just trying to get a little bit of uh, extra CSing there. And Chovy just shuffles in and is able to take him out. He's got such an HP lead, he can tank the turret, no problem. And will, in live, uh, flash away. So survives, but does lose his summoner there. Yeah, and this bottom lane, you know, even more than the Chovy solo kill, this is the real problem because, I mean, Violet's level three. He's losing not only CS, but XP. He's going to be so far behind. He, he They can't challenge after the level one and then the roam down from Willer at level three. It was a fantastic idea. Probably called them down just because they were having so much luck in the early game. And now you see Deft is just going to casually <laughs> Look to pick up a second turret plate here. Yeah, grabs the plate yeah, and from range. <laughs> he's, you know, he's denying the recon CS. He's like, okay, well, your <laughs> your AD carry is no longer in lane. I'm not even gonna let you pick up the scraps as he harasses him there under the turret. As Aladoric actually takes a level lead on Violet here just for the moment because of all that extra pressure. 
Chovy hits level six, Willer will be hitting six momentarily, and that's when that timing I was talking about with the Weaver's Wall can come through. You have that Emperor's Divide, and that's a really, really scary place to be right now if you're Tally. You're going to have to give up some of this CS and play passively during this timing window, especially when you don't know where Vista is. As you can see, he's hovering <laughs> around the mid lane, and this is just kind of a, a successful Hanoi Esports style game. This is what it looks like when they're dominating teams in the LCK, and this is what Hanoi Esports fans were looking forward to in terms of the play-ends. Yesterday was a far cry from that domination that a lot of people expected. Yeah, definitely pretty refreshing for the Hama Life Esports fans. Vista went on a little bit of a walk, gives the thumbs up. I love this Amuma skin, by the way. It's so cute. Uh, just waddling around the rift as Tally is still having some unfortunate times here in the mid lane. I mean, what can you say? You got solo killed by Toby very early on. And uh, now you just kind of have to accept your fate and try not to die again. A little bit of an aggressive attempt here from Aldoric will not actually end up being a positive trade. As doubling the CS now, 30 up is deft. See a roam potentially coming up here to the mid lane, but Chovy's positioning is so good. Willer has level six. And Talia's positioning is so respectful that they're not even going to look for anything here. And they're really selling the idea of this. Yeah, thinking about going in here, Aladoric just gonna come in and scoop up some of the minions, help push the wave as fast as possible. And Chovy, you see, he's not gonna push it. He's just gonna freeze it right in front of his turret. It's not gonna be a hard freeze, of course, but just keeps him safe. He had to flash from a Baba gank a little bit earlier on, so he knows that he can just deny some minions. He can play it safe from here. And this is part of why Toby does get big CS leads as well. He plays for his lane 100% of the time, and uh, for better or for worse yeah. at times. And you can see some of the little techniques that he uses to get ahead here. Yeah, it, it's, it's really crazy to watch him at work, um, you know, when he's got this big of a lead across the board as Vista. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit too overzealous there, my good friend, as in goes the t uh, Tristana, and she's going to come out as well. Vista getting a little bit too excited as here comes Talia, though, looking to get the kills. There's the smite, and there is the second one going into the hands of Deft as he picks up the two kills in the bottom lane. But Peace are getting this Rift Herald as we speak. Yeah, they will pick up the Rift Herald, but it's going to be at the cost of all that extra turret plating at the bottom side of the map, as well as this Drake. It'll be Hunter Life's first of the game. So, you know, in terms of what you gain here as Peace, it's a nice consolation prize. But given how these lanes are going, will you ever really be able to drop that Herald is a question we'll have to wait for the answer for, because where do you end up getting value out of a Rift Herald when you're this far behind? That's why I called it a consolation prize, is Bob's going to rotate up here, but look at the respect shown from Morgan. Yeah. And Willer's down on the bottom side, and now Peace even get confirmation of that. So, extremely safe. Will be Bob and, Bob and uh, Visitachi until, of course, Vista does come up here with his ultimate as the Drowsy is put in, and Bob is super low, but they do have a lot of damage, but not enough to take down that Aatrox. And Visitachi is just going to have to run away. And look at that. The Rift Herald didn't even get dropped. Doesn't even get to drop the Rift Herald here. And this is, by, mind you, a Doran shield and armor boots coming through here for Morgan. Like, he's not fed. He doesn't have a ton of items. This is his first kill. In fact, he's down 16 CS, but you're still unsuccessful in pulling off this kill. Could have been a huge swing for the top side of the map. You end up successfully picking off that Aatrox, then get all those plates there on the top side of the map. But as it stands still, that Constellation Prize Rift Herald we were talking about, as you watch this, this is a bit of an overextension here. If you look at where Willer is on the map right now, he's so far away, so you can't even give Vista the benefit of the doubt. Well, Willer was just a little bit late to show up for this one. He's heading down because they want to turn this into a Drake play, but he still has, obviously, the ability to engage from so far away with the Weaver's Wall that with the lead that Deft has here on the bottom lane, it's a very easy cleanup. Tons of extra gold here going over to Willer as well. Yeah, and you can see the look on Violet's face. I mean, it was a good play mechanically. Like, Violet, he was the one who buffered the jump under the turret that got Vista into a dire spot. He's the one that jumped back in for the kill. And speaking of which, they're going for it again. But again, Willer is down on the bottom side, and they cannot get the kill onto Vista. That's just going to be another kill into Willer's pockets as they're looking for more. The Make It Rain will slow him down, and that bandage will get the job done. Another couple of kills for Humble Life in the bottom lane. Some plate gold going over here to Bob Ventali, though, in mid. 
will be able to stop that last plate from going down here. It looks like Chovy will. So a little bit of value here, but I mean, when you're looking at the greater scheme of things here across the map, if you look at some of those CS numbers, you know, I, I avert your eyes, unfortunately, if you're a Peace fan. <laughs> Well, avert your eyes if you are a Dip fan. He has no health and no mana as he is trying to get those kills or those shots down. But Bobip is going to get a very nice shutdown. He was 2-0-2, two, and two, was deft. And uh, Bob is just going to pick up that money, so we'll be able to finish that first item early as Morgan's getting to work. The Dominance will be forced here. Vincent Chauncey just trying to survive, and here comes Talia again. And they don't even need Willer this time as Morgan calls his bluff and chases him all the way down the long top lane. Willer's like, you could have given me the assist, man. I came all the way here. I used my Weaver's Wall. <laughs> and this is a big nope. swing for the top side of the map. He's got a pickaxe and a phage, but that's enough, you know, as Aatrox to trade against a, a, an aggressive Renekton who's actually starting to get a little bit too aggressive. He gets punished there. And man, it was a great return to form here for Vizitachi after what we saw yesterday at the beginning of this game. That was the one lane that looked okay, but after two small missteps, now Morgan's got a massive lead. And when you're looking for a bright side here, uh, across the map for peace. I mean, all you really have is that 500 gold from death that Bob had picked up that you mentioned earlier. But it's a it's a long road to recovery here for peace. And this tempo advantage that Hanoi Esports has of this hasn't even been around those objectives like I was talking about in draft. It's just been straight up in the lane here as Deft is going to take now a 2000 gold lead as this tower falls. Yeah, I mean, it's all the plates, it's the turret, it's the CS difference at this point. And, uh, yeah, I mean, nothing really nice to say in terms of, of Peace's situation here at this moment in time. It does look like Tally is getting some plates up on the top side, so he's got that going for him. Trying to catch up in some of the gold from the mid lane. But uh, already, we do have the Ghostblade and a Dirk online for Deft. And uh, he's not the only threat on this Hama Life Esports lineup, as there are... I see about five of them at this point. Yeah. Unfortunately, too, for this Aurelia win condition, because, yes, you did see the solo kill go down to, onto Tally by Jovi there, but the power that he's going to have with, you know, great CSing that he's been able to keep up with decently, right? He is 40 down, but he's been able to pick up a lot of the, the pieces here on the map. Has now gone up to the top side of the map to kind of take away some of those missed pieces for Vizitachi, but... His split pushing win condition and the ability to threaten is going to be really nullified by the fact that Morgan is now starting to become very fed and the fact that they have Atelier that can easily match this. And Tally, I speak of him. Okay, here we go. Willer getting jumped on, but Morgan is only going forward. Willer is in so much trouble as the 2v1 will come into effect. Here comes the rotation from the side of Hama Life and Jeft is here. And again, he is the scariest member. Where did that guy go? As Porakon. It's not going to be healthy enough to survive against this, and neither will the Lilia. So Def just going to pick up a pretty simple extra couple of kills as they will rotate to the top side and take them down. Yeah, ends up being a nice rotation there for Hanalei Esports, but we still have to, you know, if I really want to put my magnifying glass uh, up to my eye and take a closer look, definitely could have been a little bit cleaner there from Hanalei Esports, and some of the overextensions we're seeing here are from Hanalei Esports are just based on a lack of vision on the map. Um, and that's a little bit concerning. Like this move here, you don't know Bob and Aladoric are actually coming up this quickly. So you end up finding yourself very overextended. And yes, they do trade it back into a favorable, uh, into favorable kills here with the rotation up of Vista and Daft. But if you would plan this out a little bit faster and cleaner, then I think that there's a way where you actually time this a little bit more delayed and then come in as three. These are the small things I want to criticize Honda Life Esports for because we saw it against Infinity. We're seeing it a little bit here as Peace. If you want to get out of this group and have a great showing in the group stage, these are the small things you're going to have to tweak. It's definitely very nice to take a second look at that on the Axe replays. Thank you for that. And uh, we do see that Honda Life Esports are getting to work here on the second Rift Herald. And at this point, it's already 5,000 gold in the lead and a lot of vision control around this area. So Peace just say, well, we'll just give this objective up and try to put the Aurelia in a side lane. And I don't blame them for going for this. This is kind of what you have to do. You got to hope that your Aurelia gets like a little bit too out of control, is maybe to, able to pick up a solo kill, or maybe Bobup is able to find a way to get down there and put some pressure there. You can see that's already what they're going for, is they have three members of Peace down on the bottom side. But Jovi has read into this 
And I think that map vision control to the side of Hamalite is helping them identify that rotation. Yeah, just a missed ward there. Uh, unfortunately, not able to sweep that one away. They stand on it. And you can see Morgan is just getting free pushed with this Herald that was taken earlier just moments ago. And no one is responding to this at the moment. Willer is here too. And the problem with the Aurelia split push is, yes, you can get a little bit done here, but you're always under fear that Willer is going to appear. When you don't know where he is, he can engage from so far away with the Weaver's Wall. You really have to respect it. Not to mention that, of course, Misfortune, with her passive, is going to be able to rotate around the map extremely quickly. She's also built Ghost Blade first. So if you're pushing as Aurelia, unfortunately, in a lot of these situations, you're like, I really want to match what Morgan is doing, but I've got to be so careful. I don't want to overextend. I don't want to lose control. I want to trade this as best as possible. When you're so far behind, you've got to pick up the scraps as best as you can. Uh, and he's able to do so, at least here, mostly on that bottom turret. Without finishing it, sitting there will be a juicy gold opportunity for him on this second pass. Yeah, I mean, they'd like to get at least one turret at this point in time. They're down three turrets to Hama Life, and that's a lot of extra gold that is sitting here on the map. Um, Hama Life, obviously, they have kind of had a monopoly over all the objectives so far. Uh, other than that first Rift Herald, which, you know, that was the one thing that Peace were able to shore up and, and try to stick in this game with. But we do have the Mountain Soul on the way. We do have Mountain Soul Point Drake coming up here, the third one. So looks like Hama Life already just sticking around here, wanting to group up and take down the mid turret. Not wasting any time or letting any of these solo laners of Peace get online. Yeah, on Life Esports are really just kind of speed running the game almost in its most efficient way. Yes, Morgan's got a really nice flank angle here. Needs to be respected. This is such a terrifying moment here for Peace because they don't know where that Aatrox is lurking. Just going to take the Wolves for now. Do have Tally with Teleport, so he's able to free farm on the bottom side of the map right now, which is great news for him as they're able to successfully defend this turret. Morgan, though, still lying in wait. Oh, boy. I knew that Death was itching to just use that ultimate because... I mean, why not? Well, we're going to see Peace go for one last try here as see you later, Bob. It just immediately gets blown up by the Misfortune. And nobody on the side of Hamalite is going to go down. They tried to go for one last ditch effort, but the Imumu was right in position. And that's really what kept all of those squishy carries on the side of Hamalite safe and let them survive and deal their damage. Yeah. You know, I went into this game saying this is a winnable one for Peace, but they're just getting outclassed so hard in terms of the laning phase alone. Like, we never got to see really any of those skirmishes I was talking about, right? I mentioned it earlier, it still hasn't happened. And if you're a Peace fan, you might be frustrated going, wow, we just got gapped, you know? It's Chovy, what are you going to do? Even Morgan crushed the top side of the map there. But there, there's other issues in that when you fall this far behind early, no matter the case, no matter your opponent, you don't have vision control. You can't deal with these Morgan flanks, right? Fights like this, you don't get to take on even terms. Like, look at how quickly Bob dies. He's chain CC'd, doesn't even get to use his stopwatch. He has one, but he's not able to get off a Q to set up for a sleep to try to turn this fight. When you're fighting into choke points, where they're just sieging your turret like this, you don't have a lot of options. You don't get to fight for objectives because you don't have vision to actually even get near them. When Hanoi White Esports are locking down the map this hard and playing so oppressively, you just don't have a lot of options here as peace. You have to try to play for the later part of the game, but with already these side laners for the most part being shut down, there are very few win conditions left. Yeah, I mean, it's either you just kind of sit back and turtle or you just uh, try to go for one last stitch effort. And uh, I think it was the latter in that case. As now we got Vizitachi by himself down on the bottom side. He is going to spot his doom. Let's see how well he can survive as Dominus will be used, but he does not have any flash. He's going to try to slice and dice away from this one. He will get the dice actually to get out of dodge. So Willer and Vista, even with their tons of CC in both of their kits, not able to hold on to the Renekton. Yeah. And it's unfortunately, a little, just a little bit too slippery. Is look at how much respect Chovy is showing here, knowing that Aladoric is very likely nearby. He's able to identify that, and Tally will actually grab a little bit of extra gold here in this turret. And as we look at the next few moments here for Peace, I think their best bet is really going to be a heroic team fight where they can actually get gold online for some of their carries. If you could maybe get Violet a double kill after Baba hits a really nice sleep, you know, sets up with that with the stopwatch. He's been holding on for that perfect moment. 
that's what you're hoping for. That's what you're praying for. If you're hoping that piece isn't going to go down 0-2 at the start of this group, because yes, Honda Life Esports is arguably the second toughest opponent you're going to face. You already faced off against LNG. Like it's a rough start to the group, can mess with your mental a little bit here. But you're going to have to really just kind of hunker down and look for those perfect opportunities. And it really starts with vision. Notice that Peace are slowly grouping up around these objectives, trying to remove as many wards as they can. Because Hanalei has had deep vision on the blue side of the map throughout the majority of this mid game. Could finally start to kind of group up as five and take back a little bit of map control for the first time in what feels like forever. Yeah, they were actually able to get some decent vision in the enemy red buff as well. Uh, it did all sense get cleared out, but you can tell that uh, they know what they have to do. Like you're saying, Wolf, they have to get some vision. They have to look for some flanks potentially or something like that. As Vista, he's enjoying his life on the winning side this time around. Um, as Tovi, nearby Tally up in the top side. You saw that both uh, Baba and Aladoric were up there as well, but Tovi not going to fall for that one. They've cleared out all the vision around the Baron. And now they're just looking to beat and see if Peace do want to run into them. Fighting at a choke point here as Peace is going to be a nightmare, especially against Chovy on this Azir. But you can't just simply let this go either. That's why they're trying to use as many of these trinkets as they can to try to gain information. But it's kind of a lose-lose situation here as Peace. You can't go in to stop this Baron from being taken, but if you just let it get taken, you're losing out as well. Vizichachi does have teleport in the side lane, but it can be easily interrupted if he decides to try to come in late. And this is actually a 4v4 fight Hanalei Esports would love to take. Oh, look at this. Babip, he found his entry, and this is the moment he wanted to find. They get Willer, and Vista's getting taken down here quickly as well. Hanalei for falling apart. Peace found the perfect engage. It's down in the bottom side. We do have Morgan going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vizitachi. Vizitachi actually just showing him his heels as he was trying to run away. And Morgan will be able to pick up the solo kill. And that, unfortunately for Peace, will throw a small wrench into their plans. Yeah, they're not able to try to take a Baron here. Morgan's got that inhibitor turret under threat. If they do decide to try to take it, Chobi's obviously still here at full health. But that's the kind of play that we were talking about that we were looking for. Babadon this Lilia has the ability to set up a team fight super well if we can actually get that Q off, right? Still doesn't use his stopwatch. So still has the pot uh, potential, the possibility of pulling this off a second time as well. I mean, with the budget he has, with the lack of gold he's had throughout a lot of this mid game, it's pretty impressive to see he's still able to pull this off, still using Lilia's cat to its fullest because she is very gold efficient in some of these uh, mid to late game team fights. And now he's picked up a lot of extra gold for himself. Still not able to transition this into a Baron. And this does stem the bleeding, doesn't give peace an advantage, but it does prove that the hypothesis is correct. If you could find a crack in Hanwai Esports is set up here and set up for those sleeps. There's a lot of potential. He's now got Azonia's online, going to make him a little bit more survivable. And I think it's really just going to have to once again be about these Lilia engages. Absolutely. Uh, the one thing, big, big thing that he did lose on that fight was his flash. Yes. Um, it was worth it, right? Now, I mean, he's got to use it if he if he gets an opportunity as good as that one. And you got to admire that he was able to set up two sleeps from this far behind with basically no vision. I mean, that's insane the play that Baba was able to just pull off there. And now you can see how life are kind of doubting themselves. You know, it's not them that are having control of this river at this moment in time. Of course, they are grouping and getting some more items, but uh, at the same time, you know, it's not life with total control of the rift anymore. They're going to have to group up here, but that threat will always remain. And yeah. I think that Baba just put the fear of that threat in their hearts where it's like, oh, yeah, we're running... MF, Azir, Talia, if any of these guys get caught out, they're just dead. You're always at your most vulnerable when Morgan is on the other side of the map, right? And that was the case in that last skirmish. He wasn't able to teleport in. Vizitachi kept him at bay. But Hanalei Esports finally do group up and take back control of this vision. And yet again, we can go back to this tug of war that we saw moments ago. Vista is on the Amubu. He's extremely tanky, so he's not too worried about these bowling balls coming through. Look at the wrap around here. Kind of like how Hamalife have totally zoned them out of the mid lane. Hamalife still with the lead, and they find a nice little macro maneuver, is what I want to call it, to just take control of the entire mid lane. They go for that, and Peace say, well, maybe we can go for the Baron. 
I don't know if they have fast enough Baron damage at this point in time as there is a ward in the pit and how will life will be looking for the follow-up. It's gonna be the turn from the side of peace as they are looking for the kill on the Morgan, but that's not gonna work out as the bolt type comes in and does huge damage from over the wall. And how will life will clean up the river fight and now they can take that Baron. I mean, look, if you're peace, you're running out of money, you're at the casino, you're gonna bet it all on purple and there's no real great play to make here. You can't get back to defend your base quickly enough against the onslaught that is the mid push that Honolai Esports have. You know they have vision on the Baron. You know you probably don't have a fast enough clear, but if they hesitate, if they choke for just a minute, maybe you get a free Baron, you get those empowered recalls, you can turn the game. It does not happen, but uh -oh. you can't fault them for trying. <laughs> Well, not this time around, as uh, Willer and Morgan will be able to run down Bobip. And you can see that Peace were desperate to try to take this Mountain Soul away from Hamalite. At least deny it for yet another Drake, but it's not going to happen. They rotate over the power of Talia and her Weaver's Wall showing right there. Yeah, absolutely. You could see, uh, you know, Bobip with this Ludens build is able to do a lot of damage, but it's just not enough. This is those moments, right? Where as Peace, you're like, okay, we could start this Baron if they if they falter on the rotation. You control that choke point, you can get an amazing sleep, right? But it just doesn't happen that way. Bobup's not in position to actually lock them all down. And we don't really have to talk about the item leads and the gold leads here for Hanalife Esports. You can see that if things don't go exactly perfectly well for Peace, and even if they do, um, it's not a fight you can really win in a choke point like that. Absolutely. So we will have our first Red Bull Baron power play today, this time in the hands of Hamalife Esports, as they were able to wrest control of the river. And we just saw how much damage this misfortune can do, especially after an extreme early lead. This champion nowadays is just kind of insane. And I know some people were talking about it before Worlds, but now it's becoming more and more apparent with every game we see it, uh, just how powerful that ultimate can be. But let's take teleport. a look at the teleport as Hamalite want to go forward. That is going to be the Curse of the Sad Mummy on three. And in goes Vista. The flank tries to go on Toby, but he has a stopwatch, and that will be enough to save his life and win this game for Hamalite Esports. Peace are routed. They have nowhere to go. Violet is trying to survive here in the pit, and he will be able to, but uh, only him as Willer. Eladoric. Oh, what? <laughs> he let him live. What a nice guy. Actually let him live and he walked away. There you go. Okay, well that's gonna be game number one. Easily going into the hands of Hamalite Esports. Even a little BM at the end. They get that final kill and they will secure their second win of players. A return to form here for Hanolife Esports. Total bottom gap there, mid control going over to Chobi. This is the Hanolife Esports that LCK fans were hoping to see dominate play-ins. It was a rocky start. They had a 1-1 here at the beginning of this group, but they're able to take peace out handily. So much control in the bottom lane. Violet hiding in the fountain there at the end of the game felt kind of like a metaphor for